For some reason, this problem is asked in a lot of coding interviews. And I believe that is primarily because it is an extension of the problem to some, which is already a very famous problem if you know about it. So what is so special about it? Let's find it out. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will see how this problem is similar to the two sum problem and how can we come up with an efficient solution just by a very small modification. After that, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an array of integers and you have to find out all the unique triplets such that their sum is equal to zero, correct? And there is one more condition. You cannot choose the same index twice, right? So it simply means that if you have chosen an index, then you cannot use it again to find the total sum as zero. So given all of these conditions, you have to find out all of the possible triplets. So let us look at our sample test cases. In our first test case, you can see that I have this array, right? Now, what are some of the triplets that when summed will give you the total sum as zero? First of all, I can find a triplet as minus one, minus one and two. If you add all of them, you will get the sum zero, correct? And similarly, you can get one more triplet that will be zero, one and minus one. This particular array will have two unique triplets by which you can form the total sum as zero, right? So for this particular test case, these two triplets will be your answer. In your next test case, you have three elements that is zero, one and one. So this is the only triplet, right? And if you sum all of these elements, the sum will not be zero. Right? So for this particular test case, an empty list will be your answer. Correct? Now let us look at our third test case. You can see that once again, you have an array and all of its elements are zero, right? Now I know that it says that these elements cannot be duplicated. But if you notice, we are not duplicating the indices, correct? Only the element is duplicated. So even if two elements have the same value and they are at different indices, you can pick them. So one such triplet that can be formed will be 0, 0 and 0, right? If you add them all up, you get the total sum as 0. So for this particular test case, only this triplet will be your answer. If you feel that now you understand the problem statement even better, first feel free to try the problem on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Before we begin to solve this problem, I want to let you know that this problem is based on a similar problem to sum, where you're given an array and you have to find out two integers whose sum equal to a target value. And once again, that is also a very important interview question. It is asked by almost every company out there. So if you're new to that, just stop this video right over here and try to first understand that problem. Because on that efficient solution, we will come up with an efficient solution to this problem as well. Anyways, we will also go over that slightly even in this video as well. But if you're new to it, just watch that video first. So coming back to this problem, you're given a sample array, right? And now you have to find the triplets. What is the most naive way or the brute force way that you can think about it? So the most naive way would be that, okay, you pick up two elements and then you will try to add them and then pick a third element. So first of all, you will pick one, then you will try to pick two, then minus one and then minus four. So these are all the possible triplets. And then you are going to sum them and see if the sum is zero, right? If yes, cool, you found a triplet. Then what will you do? Instead of picking zero, this time you will pick one. And then once again, you will start to find out all the possible triplets, right? This is one way to approach this problem. And certainly this will give you all the possible combinations. And ultimately you will be able to find out the possible triplets. But this approach will have a time complexity of order of NQ. And certainly that is not desired, right? We want to find a better approach to solve this problem. So what can we do about it? This is where I want you to take a recap and realize what did we do in our original two sum problem. We have our original array and what did we do? We sorted this array, correct? And as soon as you sort it, you get your array something like this, right? And let us say you have to find out two values, which when summed up, give you the target value of minus three, correct? So what was the approach over here? You sort the array and then what did we do? We took two pointers first in the beginning and then at the very end. Then we sum both of these values. So my current sum will be minus four plus two and that is minus two, right? 
Now, since this target value, this is smaller than my sum, right? That means we have to pick a smaller number, correct? And how did we pick a smaller number? We moved our right pointer one space backwards, right? And that is how now you will try to get the sum as minus 4 plus 1 and that will be minus 3. So voila, you found your pair, right? If you add up minus 4 and 1, you will get your answer. And this solution worked in an order of n time complexity, right? So you can see that using two pointers, you can find the pair in an order of n time, correct? So just try to keep this in mind. And based upon this, we will build an efficient solution to our actual problem three sum. So once again, I have a sample array. And what did we do? First of all, we sorted it. As soon as you sort the array, your array will look something like this, correct? And now we have to convert this problem to the two sum problem, right? So here is something that we can do. What we can do is we can pick our first element to be minus four, right? So out of the triplet, we get one value or we fix one value that one of my values will be minus four, right? And I make a condition. So one of my value is minus four, right? And what is the array that I'm remaining with? I'm remaining with this entire array, right? Now notice what your problem has reduced to. Using this array, you can once again take a left pointer and a right pointer, correct? And you have one value that is fixed. So now, instead of finding the pair, you have to find that pair plus this fixed value and your total sum should be zero, right? So you will apply the same approach as your two sum question and what we're going to do. We will take the minus four value and then try to find a triplet such that when I add these three values, my total sum should be zero, correct? Just wait for a little while and all of this will start making sense. So for this particular condition, when you are choosing your first value as minus four, you will not find any such triplet, correct? So this part is done. Now try to understand. You took care of all the triplets that could start with minus four, right? Now you have to move ahead. So what do you do? This time you're going to choose minus one as your fixed value, right? That is the value at the first index, correct? So I fix my value minus one. And then what is the array that I'm remaining with? I am remaining with only this array now, right? So I have my array over here, correct? So once again, your problem changes. Now the fixed value is minus one. And once again, you will take two pointers left and right. And then you will try to come up with a pair plus this minus one value and the sum should be zero. So this should give you some triplets, right? So you have a value minus one. And then what can you do? You can try to find the triplet minus one and two. That will be zero. And then if you move ahead, you will find one more triplet minus one plus zero and then one. That is once again equal to zero, correct? So you found two triplets that when added give you the sum as zero, correct? I hope it has started to making a little bit sense. So let us keep moving ahead. So this time I'm done with this minus one again. And if you see, I have one more minus one. So this time I'm going to fix this value as my constant value. And what is the array that I'm remaining with? I am remaining with zero, one and two. So once again, my problem reduces to zero, one and two. And I will take a left pointer and a right pointer. And this is my fixed value. So once again, I will try to find a pair along with the fixed value and try to get the total result as zero. This time I will get one more triplet that is minus one plus zero plus one. And that is equal to zero. Just keep moving ahead now. So now I will fix my next value that is zero. So I fix it. And what are the remaining values? One and two. So this is my new use case that I have to work with. And if you realize this will once again not give me any triplets. So while going through all of this, how many triplets did you find? You found this, this and this. So there are three triplets, right? Since the problem asks you for unique triplets, you can add all of these triplets to a hash fit. In a hash fit, all the duplicate values will just go away, right? You cannot have duplicates element in a hash fit. So once you add all of these elements to a hash fit, this duplicate triplet will just go away, right? And what are you left with? You are left with your answer and these will be your unique triplets. So now try to realize what is the time complexity of this problem, right? So 
you know that the time complexity of two sum approach is order of n right where you're starting with a left pointer and a right pointer and along with that what are you doing every time you are fixing one particular value right so that multiplies it by n as well correct so what you can say is the time complexity of this problem will change to order of n square. So let us quickly do a dry run of this code and see how it works in action. And you will be able to see the time complexity being order of n square as well. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have my sample array once again that is passed in as an input parameter to the function threesome. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving ahead with a dry run. First of all, we do some sanitary checks that if the array length is less than three, certainly you won't find any triplets. So just return an empty list, correct? Now, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we sort our array, right? So when I sort it, my array starts to look something like this. And then we are gonna create a result set that is a hash set and it will store all of my triplets. Now, try to look at this for loop and try to remember what we're doing. We fixed one value at a time, correct? So we run this loop from zero and go all the way to length minus two. That is because you have to pick three values at max, right? To form a triplet. So first of all, you will fix this value. Then you will fix minus one, then minus one again, and then zero. And that is where you stop. Because to have a triplet, you need at least three values. If you fix minus one, then you cannot achieve a triplet once again. So you have to stop just before that. And that is where you only go to array length minus two, right? So now try to focus on this for loop and see what is happening. We fixed our first value as minus four. Okay, so that is done. Now you need your two pointers. So first of all, you have your left pointer that is pointing at i plus one. And then you have your right pointer that is pointing at array length minus one, right? So what just happened? You converted your problem to a two sum approach, right? where you fix the element minus four, and then you have an array with the left and right pointer. After this, it is very easy. You start a while loop, and in this while loop, you will try to sum all of these three elements. If the sum is zero, well and good. You add all of these three elements to your result list. Otherwise, if the sum is less than zero, that means you have to increase your value, right? So you do a left plus plus, else you will do a right minus minus. This is the basic approach to finding a pair that equals our target value, correct? So now, once this loop goes on happening, you will get all your triplets values over here. And since this is a hash set, this won't have any duplicates, right? And as this loop ends, what do you do? You return this result as an array list, which is actually required by your function definition, right? Now, if you noticed, the time complexity of this solution is order of n square, and the space complexity of this solution is order of n because you are not taking any extra space to arrive at your solution. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that this is one of those problems where the best time complexity you can get will be order of n square. And I know that when you see a time complexity of n square, you think that, hey, maybe I can improve it a little bit. So that is where your key concepts come in very, very handy. You realize, right, how we built our solution on top of the two sum approach, correct? So that is how you can be sure that order of n square is the best time complexity you can get for this particular problem. And also note that this problem can be asked in a lot of different variations. Instead of finding the triplets that equal the value zero, you could be also asked to find triplets that sum to the closest of a certain target value. And I think that the next video I will be covering would be on that problem itself. But until then, did you face any problems while going throughout the video? Or have you found any other such problems which work on the same concept or which extend the functionality of the two-sum problem? So tell us all of that in the comment section below and it will be helpful for all of us. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.